Well, let's go to Kiev, Ukraine now and bring in Kira Rudik. She is a Ukrainian politician and leader of the political party Voice in Ukraine. Uh, Ms. Rudik, uh, thanks so much for taking time to speak with me. I appreciate it. Uh, many people took Russia at its word that it would de-escalate its shelling around Kiev and uh, Cherniv, but uh, what's been happening instead? So, uh, as we have told the world for the last eight years, you cannot trust Russia. So yesterday, there were uh, these promises that they will pull off their troops. And what happened was the most intensive shelling since the beginning of the war. I literally did not sleep this night because the explosions were everywhere. And this is just a sign of how Russia is keeping uh, their word. This is just a sign of what it is to try and to get into agreement with them. And this is why we do need the security guarantees from the other countries. So there will be a way to get Russia to keep their word. Um, I want to come back to the security guarantees in a moment. There, there were also reports that uh, today that uh, uh, Russian missiles have struck a, a well-identified Red Cross warehouse in Mariupol. Uh, what do you know about that? Um, so we are getting the confirmation uh, about this report. And the information that we are getting from Mariupol is very limited because uh, the city has been under the siege for the last uh, three weeks. What we are concentrated on right now is on trying to get people out of the city because they are really dying of starvation there right now and of lack of water and uh, diseases. So it's like a real humanitarian catastrophe. Russians are not allowing uh, the humanitarian convoys out so there was only one time when we were able to take people out systematically is when the Ukrainian army was taking over the lifeline, the road uh, on the entrance and exit to the city. But since then, and especially that this is happening in lieu of all the negotiations, we are not able to take our people out. Mm. And this is devastating. The city is uh, being shelled um, many, many times a day, and uh, people are just dying there because they have no way out. This is terrifying. There, there was, uh, let's come back to the, the negotiations at all. The, the, there was renewed hope for a, a possibly a diplomatic end of the war after the talks yesterday when Russia said it would scale back its invasion to help uh, build trust for those peace negotiations. But as you've said, uh, and, and as we've seen instead, the shelling has intensified. Um, how do you feel now about the prospects for, for peace and whether in that process uh, you can trust Russia? Okay, let's operate um, only by logic and facts. So fact number one, for over the last 30 years, everywhere where Russian army would come in, uh, they would stay there. Georgia, Kazakhstan, Belarus. So we should understand that Russians will not pull their troops back. Whoever is coming to Ukraine will have to stay here. And we know that these are the soldiers that will have to kill. Second statement is Russia is systematically unable to provide a ceasefire. We have seen it for eight years on our borders uh, where they occupy territories. Mm. So third statement is uh, there is no way for uh, us to make Russia keep their word. And it's only the international uh, community that could push Russians to actually execute on what they promised. So based on these facts, we need to understand that right now the negotiations, they need to start with the security guarantees. They need to start with saying, hi, it's not us Ukrainians talking to you. It's these, 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 these leaders of the world who are standing behind us, who are saying, yes, we all agree that Ukraine will be supported, will be provided with additional security guarantees then there could be a talk. Right now, these are the talks about, okay, what is your position? What is our position? What do you want? I am looking at the talks as uh, uh, one way of uh, getting our humanitarian convoys out, getting people out of the siege cities. This is the most important right now. Mm. But all in all, we do understand here in Ukraine that we will have to fight Russians back and we will have to push them from, from our country. Uh, we didn't have any proof in the past that diplomatic way of agreeing with Russia works. 
or can be executed on. And this is why we keep asking <clears throat> for additional weapons, for additional support. We heard strong no from NATO on the no-fly zone, but this no didn't make us um, need the no-fly zone less. So we are asking for additional weaponry then so we can provide the no-fly zone for ourselves. And we keep keep pushing and keep fighting. What is the other plan that we can have? So again, my plan for my country is to fight till the last man or woman standing. And my question is, what is NATO's plan? Okay, let me, let me follow that as we uh, finish our conversation here. Uh, President Zelensky suggested, uh, and you touched on it, that, well, that Ukraine could adopt a neutral status as a way to ensure a diplomatic resolution as long as, and you touched on this, countries agreed to protect Ukraine against any Russian aggression in the future countries. And Canada was one of the countries named. Uh, to provide this security guarantee. Uh, can you see a role for Canada if that were to happen? Oh, of course, we need all the friends who were actually standing uh, on our side when the war started to uh, support us with these security guarantees. We uh, right now are actually saying everybody who knows what a fight for democracy is, who shares our democratic values, who knows that we are fighting for our freedom, who wants the world to be a place where one country cannot occupy another. All these countries stand behind us, say that you can help us get uh, to a conclusion here. Second question is regarding the neutral status. I want to remind everybody is that in 2014, when Ukraine indeed had the neutral status and it was written in our constitution, uh, Russia attacked and occupied Crimea and occupied our eastern borders. So it was not a stopper for them. It was not a matter for them. Mm. So after that, we did not become a member of NATO. However, we uh, included into our constitution the aim to join NATO at some point. And for that, we are fighting. And for that, my people are dying right now. Okay. F uh, because Russia is stating that because we have it in our constitution, it is a threat to them. I think it's one of the, how should I say it politely, and empty accusations. And it's just using, it has been used as a, a, uh, one of the reasons that is not actually a reason. So uh, stage is neutral, non-neutral is, is a fake argument on okay. Russia's side. Uh, what is important is actually who stands behind us, which countries are standing behind us. Okay, well, we'll leave our conversation there for tonight. Um, thank you so much for your time, and uh, I hope you stay safe. Thank you. Appreciate you uh, talking to us. Thank you.